Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous videos, we've talked about some of the extracapsular ligaments, such as the MCL and the LCL. We then moved in and talked about the intracapsular ligaments, ACL and PCL. Now we're going to talk about another important topic, and those are the menisci of the knee. Okay. Now before we get into this picture, I want to do a little bit of review of what we talked about for the menisci in some of the previous videos. We looked at this picture right here, and we identified this structure as the lateral meniscus, and this structure as the medial meniscus. Remember, we have two menisci per knee. Now, if we can't just lift off the femur, if we have to look at it from this view, we can differentiate the medial meniscus from the lateral meniscus in the sense that the lateral meniscus does not physically connect with its corresponding collateral ligament over here. So this is the LCL, or the lateral collateral ligament. Notice the LCL does not physically connect with the lateral meniscus. There's a space here. And we mentioned that that space is actually, so that the popliteus tendon, this is actually flipped over, but the popliteus tendon can actually move in between those structures. So if we were looking at this picture right here, there we go, uh, we would actually, we could see a popliteus tendon moving between the lateral meniscus and the LCL. On this side, we can see that the MCL, or medial collateral ligament, is actually physically connected, and we should see in real life that it's actually fused with this portion of the medial meniscus over here. There is no space between the medial meniscus and the MCL. Okay? So if we were looking at this view, that's how we could differentiate them. If we're looking at a posterior view, we can still see the same thing. Here's our MCL, and we see the medial meniscus is fused with the MCL. Over here, the lateral meniscus has this space that physically separates it from the LCL. And in real life, this space would actually contain part of the popliteus tendon as it moves through posteriorly. Okay. Now, in general, what is the function of the menisci? Well, yes, they are fibrocartilaginous discs that act as shock absorbers and give some protection to the knee because the tibia, which is what's shown right here, a superior view, is going to have to bear a lot of weight. If we just think about standing, okay, uh, your femurs and all the tissue there and everything above that, upper body, torso, head, arms, everything, that's going to be probably around 75%, 80% of your entire weight. And so that's a lot of weight for the tibia to bear. And so it makes sense to have some fibrocartilage discs here called menisci. But the other thing that they do is they create deeper grooves okay, uh, for the femoral condyles to sit in. So we can actually kind of get a sense of that by this picture right here. Okay, Let's actually zoom in a little bit. Remember that the tibial condyles are concave, meaning they are depressions. Okay. And the femoral condyles are convex. They bulge out. And those bulges sit in these depressions. So the bulging femoral condyles sit in the depressions of the tibial condyles. Now, without the menisci, it would just be bone on bone, really the cartilage on cartilage. But the point is, is that these depressions are pretty shallow. So what the menisci do is they actually increase the depth of that depression. And so the menisci are thicker around the edges and thinner in the middle. And so overall, what the menisci do is create a larger depression, a deeper depression, so that the femoral condyles can sit further in here. Now, over here we have the medial meniscus. Over here we have the lateral meniscus. Now, how do I differentiate these two? Right? Most sources will call the medial meniscus C-shaped, and most will call the lateral meniscus O-shaped. I don't like this, because to me, this looks like a C. Okay, the lateral meniscus, even though it has a greater curvature, okay, curves around a lot faster than the medial meniscus, it's not a complete O. So I prefer to remember it like this. Think about these menisci like mouths. Like here's a mouth that's not open very wide. Here's a mouth that is open very wide. So now I'm going to tell you a little story to help you learn this. Okay? Uh, my uncle was taking a long uh, car trip one time 
And on the trip, he ate a bunch of bags of M&Ms. And the number of, and we're not talking about these little bags, we're talking about the big bags of M&Ms. And the number gets bigger every time the story's told, but the last I heard it was eight bags of these M&Ms, eight big bags, right? Now, if you want to eat eight big bags of M&Ms, you have to have a big mouth. You have to open your mouth really wide to eat the M&Ms. Well, medial meniscus, M&Ms, open wide for all those M&Ms. Okay? I don't like the C or O shaped thing. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe it helps you. But I like to remember that this meniscus looks like its mouth is open a lot wider to eat all the M&Ms. Okay? But in any case, that's our medial meniscus, and here's the lateral meniscus, right? Now, a few other things that we can see here. Um, one, uh, this actually right here, this is actually the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament. Notice, here's our popliteus tendon, or popliteal tendon. If we were to extend the popliteal tendon further, we would actually see that it actually goes between the lateral meniscus and the LCL. Remember that the medial meniscus, which is over here, is actually firmly attached to the MCL or medial collateral ligament. This thing that's actually sticking up a little bit, this is actually part of the MCL, right? The other thing about the MCL is it's attached along the periphery of the tibial condyle via the coronary ligament. So there's actually going to be some ligaments that go around the periphery of the meniscus that actually are going to anchor it in place. And we would see that both with uh, the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. Okay, Here's our lateral meniscus again. Remember that it's separated from the lateral collateral ligament by the tendon of that popliteus muscle. So they're actually separated. Another important thing about the lateral meniscus is like the medial meniscus, it is also attached to the periphery of the tibia via coronary ligaments, which we cannot see right here. I mention that only because we have another coronary ligament right here that for some reason bears the same name, but it's technically different because it does not attach the lateral meniscus to the periphery. We have this ligament right here, which is a coronary ligament, which attaches the anterior part of the lateral meniscus to sort of this middle part of the tibia, uh, kind of underneath the ACL right here. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. We also have here something called the posterior meniscofemoral ligament. It actually has two parts. Um, actually right here and here. And this posterior meniscofemoral ligament is a strong tendinous extension of the lateral meniscus that actually anchors it to the PCL and the medial condyle of the tibia. Okay, So the medial condyle of the tibia is right over here. And if we follow the lateral meniscus around this portion of the meniscofemoral ligament, this is actually called the Humphrey portion, this anchors it to the medial condyle. But this part over here, which is called the Risberg portion, this portion anchors the lateral meniscus to the PCL. Okay? Here's another look at this. Um, over here, this would be the medial meniscus because the mouth is open wider for the M&Ms. Right? Over here, this is the lateral meniscus. And we can also see that the lateral meniscus and medial meniscus are actually anchored to one another via this ligament, which we can't see right here, called the transverse meniscal ligament. All right? Now, in terms of injuries to the meniscus, I will say that the lateral meniscus is injured less frequently than the medial meniscus. The medial meniscus is more frequently injured, and there's a reason for that. Recall that the lateral meniscus is not physically connected with the LCL, whereas the medial meniscus is anchored to the MCL. In fact, they're continuous with one another at this medial side. Now, because the medial meniscus is less mobile or more stable, it's stuck in position a lot more than the lateral meniscus, if you have a twisting motion or some kind of blow to the knee, the lateral meniscus is going to be able to give a little bit more, so it's going to be able to move in here, and so it won't be injured as much. However, with a twisting motion, that medial meniscus is more firmly anchored there due to its connection to the MCL, and because it's less mobile during a twisting motion, it's going to be more likely you're going to injure the medial meniscus. In fact, there's actually something, a condition called the unhappy triad, which is a condition where you get three injuries, one to the ACL, one to the MCL, and the other to the medial meniscus. And in fact, because the medial meniscus and MCL are physically connected, um, injury to both of them at the same time is actually relatively common. Okay. 
Let's actually take a look at another view of this. So over here, this is our lateral meniscus because the mouth isn't open as wide. Here's our medial meniscus. Mouth is open wide to eat all the M&Ms, right? Here is our ACL right here. Remember the ACL has an attachment on the tibia on the anterior side and it runs laterally. There's the lateral meniscus. PCL has an attachment on the posterior part of the tibia and runs more medially, right? This right here would be our transverse meniscal ligament. And right here, we have the meniscal horn attachment of the medial meniscus. This is an attachment that anchors the medial meniscus to the anterior part of the tibia near the tuberosity. This over here would be the horn of the lateral meniscus. This is actually going to anchor it uh, to the middle part of the tibia right here underneath the ACL. Here's one of the meniscofemoral ligaments. This is actually going to be the part of the meniscofemoral ligament that anchors the lateral meniscus to the PCL right here. And then here's two more meniscal horn attachments. This particular horn anchors the lateral meniscus to sort of the posterior part of the tibia. And then this horn anchors the medial meniscus also to the posterior part of the tibia. And then we have the coronary ligaments that run around each of the menisci, and they are going to anchor each of the menisci to the periphery of the tibia, so it creates some stability there. Okay. Let's take one more look at this. Over here, we have the lateral meniscus. Okay. Again, it has this space here that separates it from the lateral collateral ligament, or LCL. Over on this side, we have the medial meniscus, this is the medial part of it, and we see that the MCL is fused with that medial meniscus on its medial aspect. Okay, and Then a couple other things, right here we have the ACL, this is our anterior cruciate ligament, and this would be our PCL. Now in terms of blood supply to the meniscus, there is some. If we look at the lateral third of the menisci, it turns out the lateral third is well supplied with blood and it's termed what we call the red zone whereas the medial third of the menisci is not supplied with blood and therefore is the white zone and it's completely dependent on diffusion of nutrients from the blood rather than direct blood supply. And so the medial parts of the menisci are not going to heal as well. Okay? The middle third between the white zone and the red zone is considered a pink zone and it's kind of intermediate in its blood supply. It can actually have some blood supply and then parts of it are going to rely more on diffusion of nutrients like the white zone. And that blood supply is, is supplied via the genicular branches of the popliteal artery. And we talked about the popliteal artery in a previous video. But understand that the genicular branches, both inferior and superior, and lateral and medial, are going to supply those menisci. And the menisci also have sensory innervation, so if you tear a meniscus, you will feel the pain. And that innervation is via branches of several nerves being obturator, femoral, tibial, and common perineal nerves. Okay, So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the menisci and several of the ligaments that are going to anchor those in place and the functions of them. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.